Welcome back to the program. So as we start off, um, we're going to be digging deep into some legalese this morning, as Jeffrey would call it, particularly after uh, looking closely at the River State uh, Court judgment uh, declaring that Martin Amewule led State House of Assembly are still PDP members. Uh, looking closely at it, it seemed as if there was some bit of confusion, uh, particularly after the River State Attorney General debunked uh, that court judgment right after it emerged uh, some three days ago. And recall after our conversation, right after that, we had said that uh, we'll be uh, hoping that the pro Fubara camp would be willing to speak. And so this morning, we're joined on the program by Mr. Peppel, a legal practitioner, Mr. Tonye Sipoto Peppel, a legal practitioner and lawyer who joins us via Zoom from Port Hackett. Good morning and welcome to the Morning Brief, Mr. Peppel. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, Happy to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. So um, we got a copy of the court judgment, and that's where I'd like to start. And there are three highlights from uh, that judgment, which say very little or nothing, in fact, about declaring uh, Martin Amewile led faction of uh, the River State Assembly being PDP members. So I'd like to highlight just those three uh, high points of, the, of Justice Bassam's ruling. Uh, the first one says that this suit is hereby dismissed and struck out for want of jurisdiction. Uh, the People's Democratic Party hereby joined as a fourth defendant. And lastly, that the claimant's case be and is hereby dismissed for lacking in merit. So where did the confusion, uh, confusion come from? Is it a misunderstanding of the judge's ruling by journalists, as uh, is often cited sometimes, or um, someone misinformed the journalist to report the case as it was reported? Okay. Um I think you hit the nail on the head <laughs> when you said that uh, it's a misunderstanding by the journal. And that is why lawyers have said to have learned men. When a judge gives a judgment, there are two parts of it. There's a part known as the Russian decision die, and there's a part known as obita decree. That might sound like legal but the Russian decedent is the mix, the real risk, the court decision was given. The rationale backing the court's decision on the issue and the facts before the court. The only that victim, I think we say, the court said in past because the court had the liberty as well as the judicial minutes to see its mind, even in its judgment. And sometimes judges use this liberty to express their philosophy regarding judgment. In this particular judgment, the matter was brought by originating son. The crux of the matter revolved around section 100 of the Constitution as the and section one G of the Constitution. Now, the payment or principle to declare in the affirmative that Mr. Martin Damehu and 26 other lawmakers as they, as they were. We are no longer members of the River State House of Assembly, having defected to another party. That was the crux. Now, going through the argument, his lordship, Dr. Russell, sought to first assess whether he had jurisdiction to hear the matter. And issues of jurisdiction must be settled first before the court assumed that he had jurisdiction. And in his wisdom, he thought that the claimants lacked local standards or the legal capacity to bring this action in the first place. Secondly, he also thought, in his wisdom, 
that the subject matter of this suit was not within the purview of the university. So that was the rational agenda of this particular matter. The other issue of repent came about when he did what judicial officers always when tackling issue of jurisdiction. In his judgment, he said, assuming that my decision on jurisdiction is wrong, let me look at the case brought before. And that is where journalism was brought. So would it be in order, Mr. Peppel, would it be in order in the near future for um, there to be some sort of guidance for an interpretation of uh, uh, court judgments or rulings? Uh, because very few journalists may be aware of what you describe as a beta dictum in the future to um, guard against such confusions. Yes, um, I think that the reputable station uh, channel, like channel, um, colleagues of mine, their employment, and if those news organizations don't have that kind of privilege, you could retain a lawyer to look through the judgment and give you what is the guide that you put out in your news reel. The fact of whether or not the claimants had made out their case wasn't the meat of that judgment. The, the court couldn't have made any pronouncement enforceable by law if it had already decided that it had no jurisdiction. So that's why it is obita victim. It is not what we hold on to in this judgment. What is relevant for us to hold on to is that I do not have jurisdiction. The claimants who brought this matter have not shown that they have no standard, that they have action of the defender. And those actions have affected them more than any other members of the public. They have not shown that they are members of the House of Assembly. They have not shown that they are members of the PDP or the AP. They have not placed any materials before me to enable me as due to restriction. That is the decision of this court in this country. It wasn't about membership. All right, Mr. Pepper. Because, <clears throat> as it were, the court does not have, in his wisdom, said it does not have to just in this matter. All right, Mr. Pepper, let's uh, backtrack a bit. I, I don't know. I, I... We don't have the full value of the entire copy of the CTC. We see the order here, uh, which is the most substantive element of that judgment uh, in the eyes of the law. Uh, but do you have an idea of what the pleas were uh, that necessitated this judgment? Because one of the ruling is that the claimant's case is hereby dismissed for lacking in merit. Uh, that presupposes, as you said, that they don't have the local standard uh, on this particular issue. Some may interpret it differently as to return to status quo. You know, there are different ways to look at this thing. So on that particular last order, maybe you bring a bit of clarity for us. We understand the issue of jurisdiction, the issue of bringing uh, a fourth defendant as a PDP into the case uh, who applied for it, we understand. And then this issue of um, dismissal for lacking in merit. Okay. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead, Mr. Pepple. Okay, like I said, the, the confusion came about. Oh, dear. Uh, yeah. It appears we're having um, a bit of a challenge. <laughs> Uh, obviously, we're, we're having a bit of a challenge with uh, the network uh, as far as uh, that conversation. But we're hoping that we can get uh, 
uh, Mr. Purple back as soon as possible. Just as a bit of a background for anyone who is not familiar with the story. So a few yeah, days ago, there was a, okay. Oh, I understand he's, uh, he's almost back again. Anyway, <clears throat> guys, uh, well, they say sometimes technology is not a silver bullet. Uh, so this is a classic case. But I was saying that for context, as Bukola has said, that, that judgment uh, came out and we, we, the initial impression everyone got was that the, 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 the judge ruled uh, that Martin Army will land 26 orders or 25 orders are still members of the PDP are not APC because what we heard was that their names are not in the register yeah. of the PD of the APC no the APC now and you know registers have to be updated oh their so names are not even they're still on the register of the PDP they are still on the register of the PDP their names are not on the register of the APC and then the issue of the uh, the issue of the and the issue of the, what do you call it now, the resignation letter, because you're right. supposed to write to your ward chairman mm -hmm. and all of that, saying that you've left. So we couldn't sign some of these docs. So those were the things a lot of people were running with as to what that judgment meant. But uh, when we finally got a hold of what you're seeing on the screen, this is what you're seeing on the screen is actually the court judgment, which is the substantive thing that is, you know, can be appealed or justiciable or taken to another court. Uh, whatever was said is what the lawyers call obita dicto, means just the opinion of the judge. Mm -hmm. But if there's anything that holds true and strong, uh, enforceable, as they call it, in law, that is what you're looking at, which was brought to our attention by the Attorney General of River State, uh, Mr. Baroma Nagogo, who uh, brought this to everyone's attention, that there is nowhere in this order that presupposes that a judge at any point in time uh, ruled that they are members, they are still members of the PDP. So we're trying to get the perspective. We had a conversation uh, with Mr. Worry Worry on Monday when he came out. Now we're having a conversation with Mr. Peppel, who's giving us uh, another dimension to it. Uh, Mr. Peppel, can you hear me if you're back? Yes, I can hear you. And uh, I had the benefit of seeing the enrolled order. What you were showing the viewers was the enrolled order. But I also have the benefit of having the 76 page judgment, 25 true copies of the 76 page judgment of his watch, and that is where I'm speaking from. All the issues we are raised about membership, about have reference to be uh, members because you are registered on, on your party, uh, uh, on the political party's register, or that you have a a ward membership card, where all, as far as this judgment is concerned, obitaged. It was after the Lord had made the decision, say, or taken the decision, that he had no jurisdiction to hear this matter on the basis of local standards. So if that, we all agree that that is true, as you can see in, on the enrolled order. Then every other thing said after that point will be It right. said in passing. It was the judge's opinion, just if he was wrong, when he made and thrust of the judgment, which was that he had no jurisdiction. Right. So if this case, and, and that has been the other argument, because we had um, another legal practitioner, uh, Mr. Warwari, as Jeffrey mentioned, speaking about this, uh, he agreed that, yes, the, uh, the court said uh, we don't have jurisdiction, we're striking this out. But that the heart of this is what really determines the membership of a politician, in this case, members of a House Assembly, uh, their membership of a political party. Is it mere announcement or the real membership register uh, of the party that connotes or eventually decides whether or not you're still a member? So my question is this, if this case were to be decided upon properly by a court of competent jurisdiction, are you saying that uh, a different ruling, or at least something different may be said from that court other than what the judge said in this instance. Okay.
Okay, uh, the, the audio is not coming out well. Uh, it looks like maybe it's your listening device or your earpiece. Maybe we'll try to resolve that uh, and, and, and get back to, to you. It's, it's been a bit tricky uh, having this conversation really with the connection. But we'll make it happen because we know that uh, River State has been in the eye of a storm uh, for months now and it seems unending. So the little we can do to get some clarity and at least give the stakeholders, as they call them, at least the major players, uh, a pulse of what the people think or what ought to be done right, we'll do as much as we can. So we'll try to rejoin uh, you in a moment when all of that is sorted. But we're discussing the river's political situation. It's on our lineup this morning. But that's not all we have for you on the show this morning. We're still going to talk about uh, some of the points the president raised yesterday about uh, our heroes past, some of the names on that roll call, uh, names that are still present with us very much and are still contributing to democracy. So we'll have one of them who will be joining us on the show this morning uh, to speak to the question of what we ordered versus what we got. And I think maybe Rivers might be a good example, guys. Mm -hmm. Would you say this is the kind of democracy that was fought for mm. 31 years ago, 25 years ago? Would you say this is really what it ought to be, what we're seeing playing out in rivers? And it's not just rivers, we have it scattered across the country. Mm. And you know, um, m much of the commentators that we've had, or at least a handful of them who have tried to be objective about the matter uh, uh, in its entirety, who are not swinging to uh, the governor's side or the minister of the FCT side, have appealed to both parties to, as much as possible, uh, ensure that uh, they put the interest of the rivers people uh, first ahead of any other, um, you know, disagreement. Uh, or any governance uh, uh, issue that may be between them. Uh, but that's what we're sadly not seeing so far. You know, every day there is a commentary, uh, there is a war of words between both parties, you know, about governance in River State. And it leaves much to be desired, really, because of the political uncertainty in that, in that state. We don't know what to expect. Um, in the coming days uh, from either the minister of the FCT or parties to the minister of the FCT or from the governor or parties to the governor. Uh, and, you know, another sad part of the commentary is how this is now becoming an ethnic war of sorts, you know, with some uh, ethnic group of coloration aligning with the governor and another aligning with the minister of the FCT. Uh, uh, Jeffrey, you're, you're from that part of the country and you understand things a bit better. Perhaps you can also shed more light on uh, Well, it's sad to say, going straight to Karadu's question, I don't think this is what people fought for. People did not fight for uh, this level of you know, control for whatever it is they are trying to control because at the center of it, it's, it's not impossible to think it's about control. Whether it's political control, resource control, whatever it is to control uh, between all of this. And we see it across, but I don't think that the people who advocated for democracy, this is what they fought for. At the end of the day, um, there are concerns, as you've said, uh, Bukola, when it comes to the tribal ethnic line. There, there is that consciousness amongst us. As a country, one of the things we're trying to achieve is that state of nationhood. It's been difficult for, we're going on 65 now, it'll be 64 years uh, since independence. And the, a note of caution is, has to be sent to the political class. If you look at our history, uh, and how the military incurred into civilian rule. It has to do with the behavior of politicians for the most part. Uh, when they seem not to agree and things escalate beyond control and the military sees an opportunity, which is perhaps the suspicion for which the governor, the president, I should say, was really talking about uh, democracy, democracy, democracy. Because when you have a combination of discontent among the populace, given the economic reforms and the the short-term pain, as is mentioned, uh, for a long-term prosperity and all of that. Uh, and when you look at the issue of good governance and all of these elements, it's a gamut of issues put together. And when you look at what's happening in the uh, sub-region of West Africa, it's important the president has to scream that democracy is still the best option. So I just don't want to look at it from the reverse perspective. It's a cross-board. Good governance, the city has said it yesterday, good governance plays a key role in ensuring security at the end of the day. But uh, we hope that River State, there can be peace. Yeah. Uh, both parties can find a common ground so that we can move on from this 
imbroglio it's, it's totally unnecessary Absolutely. and we can list them you know um security where is security uh, is there an end to kidnapping um, in that part or region of the country where is potable water where is power supply uh, where is you know thriving commerce entrepreneurship empowerment for the youth employment for the youth uh, to check urban rural migration uh, these are not the issues that are in contention obviously so we must remind uh, the warring factions uh, that have thrown up all of these litigations that we keep having to talk about every now and then that there must be an end to the war um, this is by no means the end of the conversation we hope that we'll have a better opportunity and a more clement network you know to have this conversation in the future uh, you know to reflect the other side of the group but we'll, we'll take a short break now and when we return we'll take a, another critical look at the president's scholarly presentation on democracy yesterday and we'll be right back stay with us